Welcome to Joe Gets a Job. As you can see behind me, uh, today I'm at Ellington Volunteer Ambulance Corps. I'm gonna meet with some EMS personnel, get a better understanding of their job and their profession, as well as they're gonna walk us through a tour of the ambulance and give us a better understanding of some of the pieces of equipment that they use in the various different situations and emergencies that they go out on. Usually, first thing when we come in in the morning, um, we like to go through the truck and make sure that we have a specific, specific amount of each item and making sure that the items are in the proper place. Um, I mean, it's kind of, we're trained where we need to know where everything is, how many things that we have. So need be, I mean, we're able to just come in and, you know, reach and grab or what have you. Dispatch center will be the ones that will tone us out when we have an emergency call. So when we have an emergency come over, this is what's called a CAD system. So this is for Tallinn County. So all of the emergency calls that come through are up here. We only do 911 transports. We don't do like interfacility transports, which is like hospital to hospital or um, hospital to nursing home or hospital back to a patient's home. We're strictly 911. We have a um, alarm system that goes off to alert us that we have an incoming call. Um, our volunteers actually carry pagers, as do our rescue post students. So if a call comes through, the pager will go off. We have two kinds of pagers. Um, we have one that'll just beep, and then we have what's called an alpha pager. So one of the really cool things that the ambulance service does is that there are one of only two in the state in which local high school students from 9th through 12th grade can come and volunteer as EMS personnel. They can get some training and some life-saving skills and go out on actual calls and emergencies as well as they can earn some college credit. Uh, Ellington's is known as the Explorer Rescue Pose 512. So from there, when the alarm goes off, we head out to the ambulance. If we have a critical patient and our paramedic is a little ways out because we're not a paramedic service, they either come to us or we intercept with them. So we'll start to head out and we'll meet them. We'll intercept with them somewhere in the field on the way to the hospital. First thing we'll do is grab the stretcher. And then here we have what's called a jump bag. This is basically some um, essentials that we keep um, to have at hand when we go into the patient's house. If the patient's home has staircases or front stairs or what have you, we try not to bring this in because it's kind of dangerous. I mean, this particular stretcher is already 500 pounds plus. So we have another piece of equipment called a stair chair, which makes life a lot easier. This is our stair chair. This is how we get people up and down the stairs, whether on like the second floor, third floor basements, um, or if we just need to get them out a few steps out their front porch to put them on our stretcher because our stretcher can't reach all places easily. Um, so we have them sit on here. We have buckles for them and buckles for their feet so their feet don't get um, knocked off on the stretcher, different handles. And then we call this a stair chair because it's easy for stairs. We have a track that goes down, allows us to easily go down the stairs when it's tilted backwards. So we have different backboards over here. This particular backboard is nice because if you'll notice, there is a mechanism over here, which allows us to separate both sides of the board. There's also one up there. If we can't really roll somebody because of their injury, we'll be able to slide each side under the patient but a lot of times the hospital likes us to have them off of this board before we get there um, because we're actually getting away from using um, backboards for transfers because they found it actually does more harm than good. If you guys are interested in getting a full tour of an ambulance, I will link my previous video that we did in which First Approach took us on a tour and checked out all the different compartments of an ambulance and went through the various equipments that they use on emergency calls. So what we like to do, if we have a paramedic that's gonna be meeting us on scene, we like to get as much information on the patient as we can. So we wanna to try to get a full set of vital signs. Um, we'll check the patient's blood sugar. If need be, if they need to be on oxygen, we'll um, take care of that. 
So once the medic comes on board, we can at least give him a report as to what is going on. So when we relinquish care to him, he knows what his next step is going to be. When we walk into the scene, we do pretty much what's called a primary assessment. It's just getting an idea of what's going on with the patient and making a determination what other care that they're going to need. So when we get the patient into the ambulance, we usually do another assessment on the patient. We'll put them um, on this little machine here, which is called a pulse oximeter. And what that does is it will measure the patient's heart rate and it will also measure their SpO2 level. So that's gonna kind of give us a determination of where the patient is, especially like if we get called for a difficulty in breathing, we'll use this as a guideline. The machine is a guide. You have to monitor your patient and you know watch them and see how they're doing. For most patients, we will check a blood glucose level. There are certain patients that it's mandatory. We'll pretty much check one on just about every patient. But obviously for a patient that is a diabetic, that's a must. If their blood glucose is low, we'll give them a tube of this, see how they react. If their blood sugar goes up, that's great. Um, if we're at their home, we may have them eat something or drink something to try to bring their blood sugar up. So if we have a call to a car accident, um, we get to the car accident and we have people that are injured, um, we're going to assess the situation. If the patient is able to get themselves out of the car, um, as long as it's safe for them, that's fine. They can come into the ambulance. We can assess them. Um, if you know, they are fully aware of what's going on, they're alert, what have you. It's up to them. Um, they can refuse care. One big thing with a traumatic um, accident is um, we like to make sure that their neck and their back are okay. So we will do a full assessment of their neck and back. Obviously, the driver controls the siren. But sometimes, depending on what's going on in the back of the ambulance, the driver may need to be the one that is communicating with our dispatch or the hospital. So we have the same um, radios up here, same microphones. You just have to remember if you're the one talking to the hospital or dispatch, you have to remember to pick up the correct microphone because <laughs> it's, it's kind of backwards up here than over there. Yeah, so you gotta make sure you're talking to the right people. Um, up here, like I said, we have control of the siren. Um, both ambulances also have backup cameras, our iPads, which are really handy, that we take with us on every call. And this is where we'll start our, our charting. Even though we're driving in an ambulance, we have to obey the speed limits and stuff. Usually from time we leave the station to time we get back, it's probably at least two hours when we come back from every 911 call, we will restock the truck. So say we use one bag valve mask and one nasal cannula, it will write all of this stuff down. So definitely an interesting experience. I appreciate Deb and April taking the time out of their day to have me come down, talk to me about their profession, give us a tour of the ambulance and talk about their firsthand experience on having done this job for so long, Go walking us through everything, talking about the different programs, especially the cool Explorer program that they have with working with the different high school students. Hopefully you guys are checking out some of the other videos that we posted, including first responders, which is being a police recruit, working as a firefighter, as well as going to EMT school, along with the other jobs that we have. So if you guys like the content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, everyone.